Good evening. I'm Dr. Joyce Brown. I'm the president of FIT, and I can hardly believe how much our world has changed since we met last January. We were all actually together in person on the FIT campus, and I remember paging through the lookbooks and marveling at all the talent that was in the house. I knew that spring was going to be challenging for the designers, filled with rigorous instruction and projects. And I wondered who I would be seeing at the end of this journey. And then came COVID-19 and you, all 30 of you, persevered and showed the fortitude and ultra motivation that ushers in success. So now I look forward to this evening's closing event. So these are the designers whose products, lingerie, handbags, apparel, shoes, and jewelry, among others, really belong in the commercial marketplace for all to see, to appreciate, and to buy. They've come to Designer Entrepreneur to acquire the business acumen that they need to support all that talent, to be in the marketplace, and to thrive. Now, as we all know, the challenges today are greater than ever before. That this program is offered by FIT is no coincidence. FIT is the only higher education institution that has a business school that is dedicated exclusively to the creative industries. Now, we know that in today's world, business students must understand design and design students must understand business which is one reason among many why FIT is routinely rated among the top fashion and design schools in the world. So here we are at the finish of this year's program. 13 of you were determined to have the strongest business plans and you made the semifinals. And tonight, we will discover who our finalists are and watch their presentations as they compete for $150,000 in prizes. But let me say this to the designers. Based on what we've seen of your work, you have all the creative talent to spare. You are in one of the world's most competitive businesses, so it's clear that you have grit and you have courage. And now, having participated in this program, you've mastered the nuts and bolts of a business plan. You've networked with the best industry professionals, including FIT faculty, and all of this will help you to realize your dreams. And my congratulations to every one of you. You know, FIT is in the business of helping designers realize their dreams. And for the last eight years, that is what we've been doing through Design Entrepreneur. Since we began, 254 designers from 225 companies have been the program's fortunate beneficiaries but this year marks the program's end. So as we applaud tonight's talented participants, we should also celebrate all of those 254 designers, those who took part during the program's eight years. As it happens, in the ancient Chinese lore of feng shui, the number eight symbolizes prosperity and growth. And that is what we wish for all of you. From the outset, we had great support from our industry friends, and in particular, from G3 and Mars Goldfarb, whose leadership and heartfelt belief in the potential of all these designers has been a hallmark of this program. I cannot thank you enough, Mars. You have been the heart and soul of this program. And thank you to Chris Helm for all your good management of the program all of this time. And a very special thanks to Jeanette Nostra, who has, since the program's very first days, been its dedicated and dynamic executive in residence. And now, Jeanette, it's time for you to take over. Thank you, Joyce. Welcome to the FIT Design Entrepreneur's final presentations. I'm happy to represent the industry and the industry's support of this exciting program. As Joyce said, from its inception, I've been the executive in residence, but more importantly, I've had Christine Helm and Yolanda Wardowski as partners in crime. And it's been my pleasure to recruit and invite industry colleagues to support the program. 
I want to specifically thank Morris Goldfarb for his leadership, but I also want to thank Mike Gold um, of Stitches in Canada for being um, the person who has been enormously generous in funding the uh, annual Israel Gold Grub Award. Again, I want to thank all of our donors and all of the judges who have given so much over. Um, if you have not, I would uh, urge you to download uh, some of the links and uh, not to forget to look at the lookbooks. But this evening, we've had the difficult uh, decision. Uh, there were wonderful designers. Um, the four finalists were chosen and did present to 15 judges tonight. Um, and at the end of our uh, presentation, we will be awarding the $150,000 uh, startup stipend prize money, however you want to call it. Um, so you know that there were 13 semifinalists. The judges worked uh, on Tuesday night and uh, they were presented these business plans and we do have the four finalists. So I want to congratulate Jasmine Jones of Cherry Blossom Intimates. Jean Foley and Diana Gantz of the Groomsmen Suit, Ariel Dubov and Carolina Saboya of Imbodi, and Sterling King of Sterling King Jewelry. Those are our four finalists. And now we have the pleasure of looking at the presentations. So please enjoy. Do you know a breast cancer survivor? Where does she shop her post mastectomy bras and breast forms? Any idea? You may be surprised to know that breast cancer impacts 4 million women in the United States and one in eight women across the nation will be diagnosed in her lifetime. I spent the last three years of my life dedicated to answering the question, where do women shop for bras and prosthetics after experiencing breast cancer? I'm ushering in a fresh perspective to the lingerie industry that pushes out the very sexy business model and instead uses intimates and inclusion to be impactful across the globe because every woman deserves to feel confident, complete, and whole again. Meet Josephine. Josephine experienced a double mastectomy, which is a life-saving surgical removal of both of her breasts after her breast cancer diagnosis. She shopped in a medical supply store and searched for bras and prosthetics that matched her skin tone and fit her body. Unfortunately, she died without ever experiencing what I've now made possible, the perfect fit. Josephine was my grandmother. Would you want the survivor that you love shopping in a place like this for such an important part of her body? Behind aisles of bedpans, laxatives, and adult diapers for bras and breast forms for the rest of her life? Medical supply stores, hospital boutiques, and even Nordstrom offer a sad selection of ugly bras and prosthetics in one color and no one tells women that their costs of these items are covered by their health insurance plans. This is a reality for the 4 million American women who are living with a history of breast cancer, who have emotional ties around this necessary purchase. 60% of women choose not to have reconstructive breast surgery, and 270,000 are diagnosed every year, fulfilling a considerable void in an estimated $7 billion industry. Their chest walls are imperfect, but they are alive and deserve an optimized shopping experience. Cherry Blossom Intimates is revolutionizing this experience for women. You can think of this as Warby Parker, but for boobs. We offer breast cancer survivors across the nation completely customizable, fully insurance billable breast prosthetics, custom created with 3D printing technology, so that women can wear the perfect fit. We also offer post mastectomy bras ranging across 60 sizes. These are prosthetics that can be worn next to the skin and affixed into the contour spaces of a woman's individual chest wall. The best part? We accept most major insurance providers and handle all medical billing in-house. For breast cancer survivors, their insurance will pay for it, up to $7,000 per year. Immediately after launching our flagship boutique, I recognized a major problem in the fashion industry. post mastectomy bras on the market weren't inclusive in size for my customer. The average bra size that we sell is a 40 band and a G cup, and most bras stop at double D. Plus, the marketing materials didn't reflect our customer base. Our girls are mid-40s and diverse. Traditional mastectomy brands skew 60 and older and don't include diversity in their ads. The worst part was the margins. Post mastectomy bras average $35 in reimbursement from health insurance companies, while wholesale costs from vendors average $27, meaning the average 
margin was too small to make selling the bra even worth it. So I realized there had to be a better way. I created Maya, a modern post mastectomy bra collection that is skin color and size inclusive. Each bra features soft wire-free cuts and even small hidden messages of positivity on the inner band, plus soft seams, gentle cup separation, and they're even tagless for the most comfortable experience for the wearer. I'm happy to announce that our exclusive debut five-piece collection of Maya post mastectomy bras will be released this fall in Macy's in their flagship Herald Square storefront in the heart of New York City in fall 2021. These pieces were named for my grandmother and her sisters. Created with 100% recycled fabric, each piece provides UV protection, freedom of movement, breathability, and resistance to filling. In-house manufacturing costs range between $12 and $16 per bra, increasing our bottom line by 40%. Designed in Washington, D.C., our fabrics are sourced from Italy, and each bra is made in New York. The product mix began with post-mastectomy bras and panties, and will soon extend to modern post-mastectomy recovery accessories, including compression belts, drain pouches, fashion jewelry, and storage cases. Next up, we're launching a subscription box model, where our customers will subscribe to their bras and prosthetics with refills of their prescriptions delivered directly to their door every time their prescription renews. Bra and prosthetics go to the customer's door, and their health insurance providers pay us directly. Our hands-on experience in the last year has allowed us to develop a digital fitting process for cancer customers, which will tremendously scale our ability to serve this massive market. Women are fit from the comfort of their iPhones and their laptops, and we are the only one offering this custom experience via telehealth in the United States. In a post-COVID world, we are launching a multi-city pop-up experience in partnership with designated cancer centers across the nation. Then I'm launching the Maya Network, a social network for breast cancer survivors, creating a pipeline of customers paired with direct feedback on products. Users will report their city and their state, signaling to us where to host a pop-up experience or to settle down in a brick and mortar. We're different in that Nordstrom and medical supply stores offer a sad selection of post mastectomy products where customers are treated as an afterthought. Maya is more than a bra company. We're a global community of breast cancer survivors who have created a tribe around their shared experiences, their favorite Maya products, and their lives beyond their experience of breast cancer. Plus, we started our journey by establishing a fitting experience with the added benefit of doing so with a breast cancer surgeon. We have done over $450,000 in sales since starting our business in October 2018, with 15% month-over-month growth, even amid the global health pandemic, with margins resting at about 60% across our product mix. So here's how we'll become a billion-dollar brand. Our current key partners consist of 19 regional medical centers, including Johns Hopkins. We'll increase that. We have a strong relationship with the Susan G. Komen Foundation and the Triple Negative Breast Cancer Foundation. We'll dig into that. We distribute products from our brick and mortar boutique and soon Macy's. We'll even soon be carried on the Essence Magazine Marketplace too. Our expansion plan across the nation will include pop-up experiences and a digital solution that allows survivors to be fit from the comfort of their home, leveraging telehealth through virtual fittings and digital communities. We were featured on Good Morning America and got overwhelming responses from survivors across the country asking for our products and services. This makes us determined to accelerate our virtual fitting option across the nation faster than ever before. It started with one store, but it has grown into a tech-enabled, high-margin, high-growth revolution of women seeking more from an industry that has neglected them, both online and offline. And this month, I completed the Techstars Accelerator propelling our company for exponential growth in 2021. With some of the best team members, mentors, and advisors across the nation scaling the fashion, retail, women's health, and tech industries, we have the best team for the work that we do. This fall, I'll complete my fellowship with the Tory Burch Foundation. The organization generously provided educational grants to me, which grants over 33 of my employees to receive their certified mastectomy accreditation license. I've studied both entrepreneurship and retail finance. I'm a former Miss DC USA and a Forbes under 30 list maker. I've completely dedicated the past three years of my life to studying the shopping patterns of breast cancer survivors. National retail has neglected the breast cancer survivors that we all know and love. I'm here to revolutionize the post mastectomy experience for all women across the globe because every woman deserves to feel confident, complete, and whole again. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Jean Foley. And I'm Diana Gans. In 2016, Diana and I partnered together to launch the Groomsman Suit. What started as a simple idea to provide a more convenient, affordable, and fun experience to men getting suited up for weddings has grown into a multi-million dollar brand that is inclusive and innovative. Last year, we outfitted more than 1,100 weddings and sold 15,000 suits, yielding 3.2 million in sales. In 2013, I was planning my New Year's Eve wedding. With tuxedo purchase options starting at $500, asking our groomsmen to rent was the obvious choice. Unfortunately, some of our groomsmen were not able to get the sizes they needed, so the fit was a bit disappointing. The day after my wedding, I also had the honor of returning a few of the tuxes for the guys to avoid late fees. That's when I realized that not only was the fit and quality lacking, it was a huge hassle to get the items back in time. But the real shock was the price. The tuxes were $250 each to wear one time. We're proud to have created a better option. The Groomsman Suit is the only brand dedicated to special occasion suiting for purchase under $200, less than the cost of most rentals. While the quality and price of our suiting is incredible, we are more than just a great product. With wedding parties becoming more unique, the Groomsman Suit is the first brand to carry suiting for men, women, teens, and children. We carry one of the largest size ranges of any brand, over 90 adult jacket sizes across three fit types and four lengths, limiting the need for expensive alterations and providing a like custom fit for a fraction of the price. To help us provide an exceptional customer experience, We've developed proprietary technology to assist our couples in planning their wedding style and coordinating their groups. We've partnered with one of the world's leading apparel manufacturers to develop the best fabric blend and design. By owning the whole process from manufacturing to distribution, we've eliminated any unnecessary markups that are common in the suiting industry. Over time, our customers have requested accessories, helping us organically expand our catalog to include shirts, shoes, ties, and other accessories that align with today's wedding trends. We offer free fabric swatches and a free home trial that allows couples to try out our options in the comfort of their own home and only pay for what they decide to keep. Our proprietary group coordination system allows couples to customize the items they want their group to order and launch automatic email reminders with a convenient dashboard to view the progress. All with free shipping and exchanges on every order. We cater to our customers near and far by offering virtual and in-store appointments. Couples can meet with a stylist and talk through any questions they may have face-to-face -face in one of our three showroom locations or via video chat anywhere in the country. Our commitment to developing custom tech tools has elevated our operational efficiencies and has allowed us to create unique, curated, and unmatched experiences for our customers. Our thousands of reviews with an average of a 4.7 star rating show customers love us, our products, and exceptional customer service we are known for. The potential for a brand dedicated to special occasion suiting is massive. The groomsman suit is dedicated to wedding attire. When it comes to special occasion suiting for women and non-binary individuals, affordable options are even more limited, and we've seen our monthly women's suit sales double since January. Prom Guy, our new brand dedicated to prom suiting and tuxedos, is an exciting new market. By focusing on these three audiences, annual sales could grow to $160 million over the next 10 years. Some brands are a one-time wear at a price ranging from $150 to $200. Other brands are for purchase with an average price tag of over $350. Compared to the competition, the Groomsman Suit offers the best overall value and experience. There are no for purchase brands that offer the services we do at our price point. Getting suited up is now an easy, affordable, and actually an enjoyable experience. We connect with couples no matter where they're planning online. And as a result, our brand awareness has grown exponentially year over year. Since launching the business out of our New York City apartments, 
Total sales have reached almost 6.5 million over the past four years. We're profitable with EBITDA margins ranging from six to 7% each year. With many of our weddings postponed until 2021 due to COVID, we're expecting exponential growth over the next 18 months. Much of our success can be attributed to our business model, which provides us with healthy product margins at a retail price below the competition. For every suit sold, $106 goes to our bottom line, less our operational costs. Because we're a niche, digitally native brand, we benefit from operational efficiencies and above average direct-to-consumer metrics that allow us to keep our overhead low, resulting in profitability year after year. According to the wedding report, nearly 50% of couples have postponed their weddings into 2021. We reacted quickly by launching virtual appointments to continue to help couples plan their wedding style from home and apply for stimulus support as soon as it was available to ensure we could keep our entire team employed. While COVID was initially devastating to our business, revenue has recovered to be ahead of 2019. Consumers have become increasingly more comfortable with online shopping, and the competitive landscape is changing with thousands of formal wear stores permanently closed and larger retailers restructuring with a focus on casual attire. We're seeing exciting growth in important KPIs, indicating that significant demand is building. And beyond COVID, our potential is even greater as we look to broadening our total addressable market through suiting for other special occasions and expansion internationally. We believe that giving back to the communities that support us is essential. Therefore, we are so proud to partner with the Good Plus Foundation. And as part of this partnership, we are donating $50,000 worth of suiting, accessories, including shirts, shoes, and ties to support the foundation's fatherhood program. We are also in the early development stages of incorporating recycled materials into every product we manufacture and hope to have our entire collection updated by the end of 2021. We are excited to be launching the suit shop in 2021 as a way to lead our suiting platform and truly cater to all special occasions. The suit shop will help us bring our product to job interviews, baptisms, bar mitzvahs, award ceremonies, holiday parties, and even funerals. We're excited to be officially opening our third showroom location in Denver in early 2021. We expect that the FIT Design Entrepreneur 100K Award could reasonably yield 1 million in revenue through the sales that will be generated in a new showroom location and through paid marketing via our most successful channels. As a female-founded business, we're committed to supporting women and minorities. We're so lucky to have had an amazing and diverse team of people join us on this journey. We are so grateful for this opportunity and all that the FIT Design Entrepreneur Program has brought to our business. We have learned so much and have made priceless relationships along the way. Thank you again for your time and consideration. I'm Carolina. And I'm Arielle, and we are the founders of Embody. Embody was founded on the belief that our bodies, my body, your body, our individual incredible living bodies are our homes and feeling free and comfortable in our bodies allows us to truly experience life. In other words, Embody was founded on the belief of living embodied. So seven years ago in Oakland, California, we met on the dance floor. Ariel literally picked me up, kind of like what you see in this shot. And that was it. We fell in love and we also realized that we loved co-creating together. Now fast forward to 2016, and I had noticed this inconvenience in my life of having to change outfits multiple times throughout my busy day. For work, then something social, then workouts. And we realized that this problem was not unique to me. It's something that millions of women have to deal with. The problem being that there are too many single occasion outfits and not enough comfortable and versatile essentials. So essentially my obsession with wanting to solve this problem combined with our love for movement and sustainability and each other were the seeds that led us to create Embody in 2016, a brand that offers do it all outfits, sustainable comfort clothing for the modern day active woman. Now about Embody, we're an athleisure brand that specializes in making one piece outfits. We're digitally native and direct to consumer. Our fabric is knit in Los Angeles and cut and sewn in San Francisco. 
and we kept our supply chain on shore, which allows for more oversight, it supports our local economy, and it reduces the environmental impact. And it gives us shorter lead times. With fabric in hand, it takes about six weeks to complete one production run of a few thousand units, and then it's just a short drive to our fulfillment center. Now our fabrics are lensing certified, made from tree fibers, and we care deeply about creating a future where fashion and the planet are aligned. So as Embodi expands its reach across the world, it will continue to be at the forefront of truly sustainable fashion. And we currently offer bodysuits, tops and bottoms, and jumpsuits. All of our products have minimalist yet technical designs. We plan on soon expanding into new eco fabrics like fabrics made from orange peels. And these two are our best sellers, making up for almost 90% of our revenue. They're similar in design. Both have double paneled compressive bodices paired with a more relaxed flowy pant with deep pockets. Since these were conceived last year, we've continued to scale production to keep up with demand, but we keep running out before we're able to reproduce. So we created a pre-order system to capture these sales. We've also been using lending partners like Shopify Capital to gradually scale our production runs. Still, we need to triple our production to meet the demand for our jumpers. So who's buying all these things? She's 25 to 34, urban, making around $70,000 a year. She's comfortable shopping online and uses social media regularly. She's juggling a lot. So she values minimalism and looks for opportunities to simplify her modern life. And now these are our customer profiles. We use them to segment our advertising and to inform the content we're creating for our social media feeds. This data shows our revenue broken down by age group. As you can see, 41% of our revenue is coming from ages 25 to 34. And geographically, 21% of our revenue year to date comes from these five cities, mainly Los Angeles, New York City, and San Francisco Bay Area. The remaining 79% of our revenue is coming from customers all over the US and the world. This map shows the locations of over 4,000 orders placed this year. And these are photos that customers have organically on their own posted on Instagram. We have thousands of pieces of user-generated content. As you can see, we attract a wide range of humans. Our community is inclusive and diverse, and they live in their Embodi. Instagram is our primary marketing channel, and in March, we hired a company to manage it. Athleisure is currently oversaturated with leggings and tracksuits, and we're the only company specializing in one-piece outfits. So when you blend that with the fact that we're a sustainable brand and our products are made in the U.S. and we're D2C e-commerce, you have magic in the making. Lastly, our customers are loyal and proud to promote our brand. We have over 350 five-star reviews and more coming in every day. And great reviews make it easy for prospective leads to trust us. We have a website conversion rate of over 3%, two times higher than the industry average. And our return rate year to date is 10%, which is great compared to an industry average of around 30%. And 18% of our orders are repeat purchases. Now the athleisure industry is a $64 billion industry in the US and it's growing. And when COVID hit, the demand for athleisure skyrocketed. Now industry experts such as BOF and McKenzie are predicting that this heightened love for athleisure will be the new norm in the post COVID fashion climate. As you can see, the athleisure industry is moderately fragmented. So there's plenty of room to capture market share. And on our competitor grid, we've placed ourselves in the niche and premium quadrant with our average unit price at 121. And Bodhi is predominantly a full price business, only having sales on Black Friday to maintain our positioning. Marketing, we're investing heavily into Facebook and Instagram and it's working. As you can see, we have a return on ad spend of seven and a half, which is well above the industry average of four. If you've been to our website this year, you're probably getting hit with our ads. For Google, the ROAS is so high because we're running mainly branded ads. So when someone's looking for Embodi in Google or a misspelling of Embodi, they get hit with an ad. So these are already hot leads. We have near 13,000 email subscribers and we're actively working to set up a more comprehensive funnel. Lastly, strategic partnerships. We owe so much of our growth to collaborations. We're setting up an affiliate program by 2021 to better track campaign performance. So we expect to hit 1.1 million in revenue this year. Year to date, we're at 555,000. COVID gave us a surge and cleared out our inventory. Our manufacturer then shut down in April. So we had to refine our pre-order system to capture some of that traffic. When BLM hit as a brand, we were sensitive to the situation and cut ad spend by 80%. In August, we revved up our ads again and had our highest performing month of all time, 
$115,000. This month, we're expecting to hit $150,000. And the best part, we're profitable. Our net profit is 16% year to date. Our COGS are a bit higher than we'd like them to be, but as we scale, they will drop. And as we roll out new products, we'll price them for wholesale to keep that channel open. And now we're assuming a growth rate of 3% month over month from this month through December 2022. And to reach these projections, we're going to expand our collections, incorporate AI to our website, and we're going to be entering new digital marketing channels. We also plan on entering the mommy and me market with matching onesies for moms and their kids. This new mom economy is a $46 billion industry. And in the coming years, we'll be expanding our reach globally and growing our team. As you can see, we're lean. Our next hire will be an operations manager, which will allow us as the founders to focus on brand building. Oh, and by the way, all the Embody photos in this pitch deck were taken by the incredible Ariel. This is our fourth year in business and we have bootstrapped it the whole way. We have a loyal following and our revenue is surging. With this $100,000 grant from FIT, we'll invest $70,000 into fabric to unlock $230,000 in pent up demand and we'll invest the remaining $30,000 into marketing to help us surpass our goal of 2.4 million in sales in 2021. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. We're incredibly grateful for this opportunity. Hi everyone, this is Sterling King, the designer and founder of the jewelry brand Sterling King. The brand is based in New York City and was founded in 2018. Sterling King Jewelry is sculptural, powerful, and contemporary. We view our jewelry as wearable sculptures with contemporary sleekness. We believe that jewelry should be both powerful in form and empowering to wear. Our collections range from oversized cuffs and collars to smaller, more approachable styles. We design with careful attention to form and fit, combining old world craftsmanship with cutting edge technology to create pieces that blend body and jewelry. We're committed to ethical and sustainable manufacturing processes through local production, traceable supply origin, and cast all of our products from recycled metals. We also incorporate upcycled materials like vintage lucite. Sterling King has become a favorite of celebrities and style icons, including Lady Gaga, Cardi B, and Katy Perry. We've also been featured in numerous top publications. Our product offering includes earrings, rings, necklaces, and bracelets, and a variety of metals, finishes, and embellishments. Our collection begins with our power pieces, which serve as both signature products and strong press pieces. Our best-selling segment is wearable statement pieces, which are bold and approachable and represent around 45% of SKUs. Our core classics tend to be smaller in scale while upholding our signature style. We also offer a selection of fine jewelry cast in 18 karat gold with pave diamonds. Our jewelry serves the fast growing and evolving demi fine jewelry market that has emerged in recent years to bridge the gap between fast fashion and fine jewelry. Demi fine jewelry is composed of semi precious materials such as sterling silver and gold plating. Driven by, con by shifting consumer preferences, the demi fine jewelry segment has outpaced the overall jewelry market and is expected to grow at a rate of 16% over the next five years, providing us with significant potential to scale. Competitive brands that offer statement jewelry tend to lean either towards fast fashion or fine jewelry and offer minimalist basics or low quality costume jewelry. Our jewelry fills the gap for customers looking for wearable statement pieces at an attainable yet aspirational price point. While our price points range from $150 to $1,200, the majority of our SKUs are priced between $250 and $600 in line with the sweet spot for Demi Fine Jewelry. We benefit from a highly nimble operating model. Our relationships with local manufacturers provide rapid lead times and are key to providing a wide assortment and customizations while mitigating risk. 
Around 30% of our direct-to-consumer sales are made to order and ship within two to three days of purchase. With no minimum order requirements, we operate on a continuous small batch production with a rolling basis. We meticulously manage our working capital based on seasonal planning and flexible manufacturer terms, minimizing our inventory needs and upfront costs. Our key customer segments include urban young professionals and savvy metropolitans who reside in major cities like New York and London, as well as luxury sur suburbanites that live in affluent suburbs and small cities. Our customers turn to our jewelry for self-expression, confidence, and to curate their own personal image. They most often purchase jewelry as a way to treat themselves. We utilize an omni-channel distribution strategy which includes direct-to-consumer, wholesale, and other revenue streams like brand collaborations and rentals. Direct-to-consumer sales represent our largest channel, including combined revenue streams from e-commerce and a variety of offline channels, including private appointments, showroom events, pop-ups, and private sales. As an emerging brand, we prioritized in-person sales opportunities in 2019 to maximize customer interactions and garner valuable feedback. However, post-COVID-19, e-commerce has quickly become our primary sales channel. We quickly adapted and pivoted to a digital strategy in early 2020 and have successfully increased our online sales by over 400% since the first quarter. We utilize a diverse set of marketing channels and strategies, including paid digital, email campaigns, social media, and celebrity seating to prioritize accelerating brand awareness and new customer acquisition. As a result, we've seen an increase in our average online order value, increasing from just under $300 to over $500 in the last nine months, with customers increasingly purchasing two to three items per order. While e-commerce represents a majority share of direct sales in 2020, we expect offline sales to regain their share once in-person shopping returns in the coming months and years. We also expect the newfound consumer trust in online luxury shopping to have long-lasting effects, resulting in growth across both online and offline channels to achieve diverse and well-balanced revenue streams. Our current wholesale stockists include small boutiques and specialty stores in the U.S. We've also recently received an influx of interest from several major U.K. retailers, including Selfridges and Browns. We are currently in the process of onboarding with Browns and are in talks with Selfridges for Spring 21. We are also targeting e-commerce retailers like Moda Operandi and net porte Our other revenue streams come from collaborations and rentals. Last year, we collaborated with several ready-to-wear brands and expect to continue to do so in upcoming seasons. Additionally, we frequently rent out samples for ad campaigns and commercial shoots, charging up to 30% of the retail value per item. We saw a revenue increase of around 400% in 2019 and expect high growth over the coming years through our omni-channel growth strategy. While we experienced some setbacks in 2020 due to COVID-19, we are still on track to see positive growth and anticipate robust growth in the coming years. We aim to remain primarily a direct-to-consumer company, but expect wholesale to represent up to 20% of our total revenue by 2022 based on current pipeline. We continue to maintain high gross margins and aim to gradually increase these margins through further efficiencies in our manufacturing. As founder and creative director, I come to jewelry from a unique background as an experienced women's wear designer and former professional ballet dancer. As a small team, we utilize the support of seasonal and temporary workers and plan to increase our headcount in 2021. In spite of this unusual year, I feel very positive about our growth in 2020. We see a very exciting future for our brand and look forward to seeing many more women in Sterling King. Thank you all very much for being here today. I so appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Judges viewed these presentations earlier this evening and have made their decision. I would like to take a moment and just 
thank everyone who participated, everyone who worked hard. This was an unusual year. Um, we've had some challenges in terms of the timing of the program and the presentations, but all of you rose to those challenges. So um, tonight we actually have yet another challenge. Um, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, and I'm here to announce that we have a two-way tie for first prize. The judges have discussed this. We will award um, each of the stipend of $75,000. And the names of those two winners are Cherry Blossom Intimates, Jasmine Jones, and Sterling King, Sterling King Jewelry. I want to heartily congratulate the four finalists and our two prize winners. It has been a remarkable nine, eight, eight, nine years that we've been doing this. Um, I again thank our sponsors and our donors. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. I want to congratulate the winners. I want to congratulate all of the participants in the program and thank you all and wish you all to stay safe and healthy and go on to do great things. Thank you all for participating and good night.